Do you want to become a master of Azure and impress your boss, clients and colleagues? And do you want to pass the AZ-104 exam on the very first try and get certified as an Azure administrator? And if you answered yes to any of these questions, then this video is just for you. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In this video series, I guide you through the real exam like questions covering all the important concepts, topics and skills that you need to know to pass the AZ-104. So welcome everyone, question number 136 part 22. The question is saying that you have an Azure subscription that contains an Azure Active Directory tenant named Contoso.com and it also has an Azure Kubernetes service cluster named AKS1. Now the administrator reports that she is not able to grant the access to the AKS1 to the users in Contoso.com and you need to make sure that the access to the AKS1 can be granted to the Contoso.com users. What should you do first? And your options are Option A, from the Contoso.com, modify the organization relationship settings. And then option B, from the Contoso.com, create an OAuth 2.0 authorization endpoint. And then at option C, we have recreate AKS1. And then lastly, from the AKS1, create a namespace. And the correct answer for this question is option B, from the Contoso.com, create an OAuth 2.0 authorization endpoint. Now let's quickly jump to the question number 137 that says that you need to resolve the licensing issue before you attempt to assign the license again. What should you do? And your options are option A from the groups blade invite the user's account to a new group. Option B from the profile blade modify the usage location. And then lastly at option C we have from the directory role blade modify the directory role. And the correct answer is option B from the profile blade modify the usage location. Now let's check out some documentation on the same. And friends, this documentation here will help you identify and resolve the license assignment problems for a group in Microsoft Intra ID. And here you will be able to understand how to find the license assignment errors. You will be able to find the users in an error state in a group. So there are a lot of business scenario or lot of error states that are given in this documentation. For example, you have no enough licenses conflicting services plan and then other products which are dependent on the license. You also understand what are the usage location when it's not allowed. So here you can read that some of the Microsoft services are not allowed in a location because of the local laws and regulations. And before you assign a license to a user, you must specify the usage location property for that user. And you can specify the location under the user profile and edit section in the portal. So that's basically the validation for our answer as well. But then you can continue on this documentation and read and understand more such scenarios. And now we have question number 138. It says that your company's Azure subscription includes Azure virtual machines that run on Windows Server 2016. Now one of the virtual machine is backed up every day using the Azure Backup Instant Restore. And now comes the real fun in the question. It says that when the virtual machine becomes infected with the data encrypted ransomware, you are required to restore the virtual machine. Which of the following action should you take? Your options are option A, you should restore the virtual machine after deleting the infected virtual machine. And then we have option B, you should restore the virtual machine to any virtual machine within the company's subscription. And then we have option C, you should restore the virtual machine to a new Azure virtual machine. And lastly, option D, that you should restore the virtual machine to an on-premises Windows device. What is the correct option? What do you think? In case you pick the answer option A, restoring after deleting the infected virtual machine, see that could be really risky because the compromised virtual machine might still be accessible and could potentially reinfect the new virtual machine. Then coming to the option B, restoring to any virtual machine within the company's subscription is possible, but restoring to a new Azure virtual machine is a safer option. And that's why option C, you should restore the virtual machine to a new Azure virtual machine is the correct answer. And just to give you more information, here you can see in the event of ransomware infection on an Azure virtual machine, 
that is backed up using Azure Instant Restore, which was the call in the question as well. It is generally recommended to restore the virtual machine to a new Azure virtual machine. And that's what we have also picked as an answer. This will ensure that you are not using the compromised virtual machine and that you can have confidence that the new virtual machine is clean and unaffected from any ransomware. And friends, I have collected one more similar question to this. It will help you understand this concept better, but in a different question format. So here it comes, question number 139. Let's read the question first. It says that you have an Azure subscription named subscription one. Now this subscription one contains two Azure virtual machines named VM1 and VM2. Now the VM1 and VM2 runs on Windows Server 2016 and VM1 is backed up daily by Azure Backup without using the Azure Backup agent. So please note down the subtle differences between both the question. But then there are also very good similarities between both the question. Let's read it ahead. It says virtual machine is affected by ransomware that encrypts the data, which is quite similar to the previous question. And further, it says that you need to restore the latest backup of virtual machine one. Now to which location can you restore the backup? To answer, select the appropriate option in the answer area. And please note that each correct selection is worth one point. So here you can see that we are given with two options here. The first one is that you can perform a file recovery to the virtual machine. So here are some locations given. And then we have this one, which says you store the virtual machine one to all these possible options. Now let's check out the options. Here we have virtual machine one, virtual machine or a new Azure virtual machine only. And then option C is virtual machine one and virtual machine two. Option D, a new virtual machine only. And lastly, any Windows computer that has an internet connectivity. So you can see that there is a lot of similarity between these two questions, but then the question format is different and you have to pick two correct answers here. So let's check out the first correct option for this box one here. And the correct option is option E, any Windows computer that has an internet connectivity. Now let's understand where can you restore virtual machine two? Well, the correct answer to this question is option B, virtual machine machine one or a new Azure virtual machine only. Now friends, let me explain both these answers in a little bit more detail here in this box one where we have chosen any Windows computer that has an internet connectivity. So friends, for the file recovery, you download and run a Windows executable to map a network drive and it only run when the OS meet or the operating system meets the requirement. Any computer running on Windows Server 2016 or Windows 10 is suitable and file recovery that can be done from any machine on the internet. And then coming to the box to virtual machine or a new Azure virtual machine. And in this case, for restoring a virtual machine, you can choose create new or replace existing. Let me show you some documentation. So let's understand the process of recovering the files from Azure Virtual Machine Backup. Here you can see that we have steps given. The first step is that you have to generate and download the scripts to the browser and recover the files. The second step is that ensure that the virtual machine meets the requirement before executing the script. And then we have operating system requirements to successfully run the script. And as a step four, we have access requirement to successfully run the script. Step five, running the script and identifying the volumes. And lastly, step six, closing the connection. So here you can read all about these steps all in detail. Here you can see that you can also observe this picture here. And then step by step, you can go through this documentation in your own sweet time and understand the entire process. And friends, I'm sure that this concept of ransomware and recovering the virtual machine might be new to some of you. But trust me, ransomware is part of real life. I recently came across one in my actual project, but then good for me, I had some alerts set up in my Azure project. And that's why I say my friends, as an Azure administrator, it's imperative for you to deal with all these ransomware, encryption, and how to restore your virtual machines. These are actually the day-to-day -day activities for any Azure administrator. And this brings us to the question number 140. The question is saying that you have an Azure web app named app one. Now this app one has the deployment slots shown in the following table. So here you can see we have name of the deployment slots. We have web app one prod and then we have web app one test. And you can also observe the functions which are given as production and staging respectively. Moving ahead in the question, it says in the web app one test, you test several changes to app one and you also back up the app one. And then it says that you swap the web app one test for web app one prod and discover that the app one is experiencing performance issues. 
and that's why you need to revert to the previous version of app 1 as quickly as possible. What should you do? Your options are option A, deploy to the app 1. Option B, swap the slots. Option C, clone app 1. And lastly, option D, restore the backup to app 1. And the correct answer for this question is option B, swap the slots. So friends, when you swap the deployment slots, Azure swaps the virtual IP addresses of the source and the destination slot. And that's how the swapping of the URL or basically we are saying that the URL of the production becomes the URL of staging and also the staging URL becomes the production. So essentially the biggest benefit of deployment slot and swapping the slot is, is that you can change the production environment to the test environment and maybe you can bring the staging environment to become the production environment. And the users of your web application or your website will not experience any disturbances. And in case you want to gather some more information on how to set up the staging environments in the Azure App Services, this is the documentation. Here you can read all about the methods, how to set up the environment. You can also take a view on what are the prerequisite and understand a step-by-step -step process of setting up the slots and how to use them further. And also my friends, do check out the description box as I have given some more documentation link in the same. And as always, please, please do not forget to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel so that you are timely informed of all our upcoming videos and shots to take your Azure learning to the next level. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.